There were three bedrooms in the cottage. One was a landing bedroom. There were three girls in one room. Our brother stayed at Granny's. There was a kitchen and a little pantry with a big stone slab. We had an open range with an oven on one side, a boiler the other side. There were cast iron pots, trivets and a hook. Washing was done in the wash house. We'd gather bracken off the hills in bags for washing to help heat the water. There was a dolly tub and a wooden dolly. Bath night was every Friday night. We had to carry water from a stream that ran over the hill. But if it ran slow or dry, we had a well at the top of the field. Drinking water came out of the level. That's the well. Mum was going up to the field to get a bucket of water. The pig came running up after her and she went head first down the well. We did get her out like. It was a surface well, not a deep one. Please turn me till the message plays. Most of the cottages had a dairy. It was the usual thing to have a cow and you'd be self-sufficient. We had a couple or three goats. Mum made goat's cheese and butter. She milked the goats. People would have to walk their cow down to the bull at the hollies or polydine. The pig had a sty, but we lived them out. People down in Snail Beach always had their pigs in styes. We made pig swill, boiled little potatoes and meal. We had a few chickens and we'd rear geese. We'd have two gullies, that's goslings, and rear them for Christmas. We'd pick wimbleys for extra money. We had a pig and Dad had sheep on tack, on rented land. I fetch sheep from over the devil's chair. We had dogs, but they'd fetch the sheep only if they wanted to. When we were children, we would walk up from Linsterley School to Snail Beach and then we would have to walk up to Blakemore Gate to fetch milk. It was a penny for a tin of skimmed milk. I think it held three quarts and it had a lid. Dad made Elsie a tin to get the milk out of a fruit tin with a bit of wire round it. Me and my friend Phyllis would come back so far down and get behind a gorse bush. We'd tip some milk in the lids and we'd sit there drinking this milk. It was wonderful. It would make a lovely milk pudding on a Saturday morning. My dad was a big gardener. We had one of the best gardens. Folk would say, Bobby always has a good garden. He grew lettuce, carrot, kidney beans, peas and celery. Potatoes, we used to thump them for the winter. Alton Arab of Gatin Lodge had a field for his tenants and we used to go and put a couple of rows of potatoes in and some swedes. You had to see to them, and then, when they was dug up, they'd come home on the horse and cart. They had to keep us all through the winter. We never bought vegetables. Groceries, coal, paraffin for the lamps, all had to be carried up from Snail Beach. Candles were used more than anything. I carried bread on one side of me back and the groceries on the other and a gallon of paraffin in me hand and walked up by the big chimney at Snail Beach, up Rusty Hill, all the way up.
Harvesting was a big thing. Grandmother used to do the most fabulous spreads out in the fields. Big salads with hard-boiled eggs and big pieces of ham. She would make a beer called botanical beer. I don't know if it was alcoholic or not. Us kids never seemed to have any ill effects from it. Everybody helped each other with their harvest. Then they'd move on to the next place. I loved it as a child. Everybody'd muck in for haymaking. We all had to come back to help with the haymaking. We used to almost dread the call. I could do with some help. We're going to make hay. At the side of the house was what we called a tattoo. It kept all the root crops dry and frost free in the winter. They were very efficient, intricate constructions of stone. The design is similar to the entrance to Scott Level in Snail Beach and the bridge in Crow's Nest Dingle. Everybody had a potato tump in the garden. You dug it in the autumn and lined the floor with cut bracken. Then in went the potatoes or other root vegetables, and the whole lot was covered with soil and clots. Once you opened it and let the air in, you had to take the potatoes out and keep them in a coffer, which was a big rough wooden box with a lid, probably six foot by four foot, that you would keep in the tattoo or an outhouse. Outside toilets had buckets that were emptied into a hole dug in the garden. As for toilet paper, you never had toilet paper. We had newspaper. Rip the newspaper up, put a hole in one corner with a bit of string through. Some folk had little boxes on the side. The bucket from the toilet was emptied down behind the rhubarb. We always had really good rhubarb. In the 1947 snow, my mother never left the hill for 13 weeks. Dad managed to get down, but his tracks filled up with snowdrifts. There was snow up to the bedroom window. We had to tunnel out, open the door and dig a tunnel. Their roots were either down the sheep tracks, down Rustin Hill, or down to the hollies. <laughs> 